All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I'm your host, Larry, the tit-hunting Chupacabra here today, and we're going to be checking out the game Bloody Boobs, which, as you might imagine, is one of those games that takes a pretty standard plain Jane game setting. In this case, finding magical altars within an evil dungeon full of monsters that want to murder and rape you, literally, uh, and just throwing some tits in there because nothing sells a video game to 12 year olds better than just randomly putting titties in a dungeon crawler. Although, unlike most dungeon crawlers, the only thing that really changes in this game isn't so much the map, but rather just the locations of the different shrines that you're looking for inside of it. So this is a game that's available for $3 on Steam, and it comes up for nudity, gore, action, and violence. And it's made by Edward Bulashov. I think that's a Russian name because you can translate the game into what I'm assuming is Russian. I don't think any other language uses the same characters, but you can have Russian or English. And I'll just, you know what, I'll just skip, I'll just skip the rigmarole. I'll show you exactly what you're doing here. So you can create your character, you can create one of three characters, and this is the game. They're trying to sell you on titties. And I should also mention that the only thing inside of this game that has any physics whatsoever are your tits, ooh, jiggly, and also your ass, which also jiggles a little bit. So it's, it's really handy if you're wandering around the catacombs that you have something pretty nice to look at from both behind and the front. And I can certainly understand why all these, you know, desperate, lonely monsters would rather, you know, murder me and drag my corpse off somewhere to be molested. So, yeah, we've got, let me just reset all these to zero so you can kind of get the experience here. We'll set that to one. So basically, you start out with some blonde chick from California. She must have been teleported to an evil dungeon by a really lonely, kind of creepy god. And normally what I would do in a game like this is I would make a strong, independent black woman who don't need no man. But unfortunately, there is a big update that added narration to the game. They randomized some of the spawn points for some of the stuff and also made the lighting engine suddenly be a giant bag of dicks. It's just, un it's impossible to see fucking anything. I don't know why, it's just, it's just there. So, because I can't see anything worth a damn, I'm gonna leave her as kind of like a pale white, so I can enjoy those titties and the ass. Because basically this game, the whole design of this game is just selling tits to 12 year olds. It's kind of the category that it fits into, kind of like that game Haiti that was pretending to be like the next portal game with a robot who had massive secretary jugs. But I will leave her white. Um, you have two options for face. You've got the I'm innocent and vulnerable. And then my personal favorite, the same face, basically, with eyeshadow and then Dolly Parton eyebrows that look like at any moment they could soar off of your face like a majestic eagle trying to escape the demons. Uh, for breast size, obviously, the only thing you need in breast size is to get bigger so that they're nice and jubbly wubbly. Although I don't think anyone's tits jubble quite like that. And also, you might notice that there's a weird connection spot here on her character model. Like, this character model was maybe gotten somewhere and then edited later, where it looks like someone is hot glued, like, artificial tits onto somebody who lost their tits in, like, a tragic boating accident. And then, of course, here's my all-time favorite part of the whole character creator. The only part that has a load of different detail is the hairstyles. And if you look here... These hairstyles literally look like they're right out of the getting started guide or getting started kit for the Desperate Housewives. Like at any moment, I could call Consuela the Maiden to clean up all the breakfast I angrily strewed about the kitchen, go pick up, you know, Jason and Javier from soccer practice, and go fuck Melinda's husband when he gets back from work. Uh, that's the whole deal. Personally, none of these hairstyles really seem like they fit inside of a dungeon crawler, and I'm not even going to show my hair, so it's not really that important. 
Uh, clothing styles uh, include bikini, in case you're looking for that summer wear, uh, getting ready for like June and July. Or you can have Little Tammy's first S&M experience, where you can buy this, which looks like someone got their S&M gear at a Hot Topic. And then you can change color of the main bikini to a bunch of different things, along with the hair color. But when you switch to the other type of clothing, you can't see it, so there's no point, and this doesn't change color. And then with clothing, oh, I already said that, um, and with masks, doesn't matter what hair you have, because why would you want anything besides a brown paper bag for a fuckhole mask that you can wear over top of the whole ensemble? And this is the thing that we will take into this grandiose adventure, trying not to get murdered by everything inside of the dungeon. I should also mention that there's two game modes in this. There's single player, which is very straightforward, collect all the things and escape. And then there's online multiplayer, which is not very stable. I've tried it a couple of times, and good luck with that. And you can play as the boobs, which are, you know, very nicely done. It's not even you get to play as the women, you get to play as the boobs in this game. And then you can play as boobs and the gazool. And the gazool, of course, those are the little monsters that run around and try to murder you. Uh, for my money, I wouldn't bother with this. It doesn't work very well. Not really sure if this game is going to get super fleshed out more, because this game was specified to still be in development, even though the game is listed as, like, for full sale. It's not in early access, it's in a completed form up on the Steam store where you can buy it and play it. I think, aren't the rules supposed to say that an in-development game belongs in early access? I don't even. So here's our HUD. We've got five slaps that we can take. We can get mauled five times before we die. And then, yes, you guessed it, that is a dildo on the other side of our sort of HUD that we have to fill with magical jism in order for the god in this place to open up the portal and let us get the fuck out. I know, I know. Oh yeah, also there's narration. And it's kind of, it's supposed to be sarcastic and kind of dopey and funny, but it's not paced out very well, and I find it kind of annoying. But basically, this just says, find the four altars, pray to them, and you'll be able to get the fuck out of here. Now, unfortunately, and I'm not really sure why, with the same update that added that voice acting thing in it, and there's the first uh, shrine over there, they also changed the lighting in this game so that it's supremely and just agitatingly dark in here, and I have no idea why. So let me just turn off the filters here, and I'll leave the optimization off, so that now we can actually see what the heck is going on in this game. Because that, that filter thing wouldn't be bad if I could say, run in here and pick up this torch or something. But guess what the only thing that I can do in this game is? Basically to interact with 90% of the game. I can flip people off. That's that's the only thing that my character is capable of doing. I mean, I must be a Cali girl, because I can't think of anyone else who would flip off a monster instead of running away or trying to find a sword. So with that in mind, uh, let's look for the first critter. So, the AI in this game, not the best, so there's really no threat to dying in this game if you're, if you're fast on your feet, but that thing over there that I'm showing you, that's like a weird head crab thing from, like, ma like what was it, Half-Life? And it's basically a headless torso with, like, the hole in the throat has got teeth that can chew you with, and all the hands and the feet have been turned into, like, murdery crab claws. So, the whole point of this game is to prostrate yourself before the cock statue, and then pray to it. Hopefully before... Oh, God damn it! Go the... No, run! Run, you stupid asshole! Hopefully praying to it before this thing decides to molest us to death. As you can see, I rounded the corner so the AI stopped being able to see me, so it's already reset. Yeah, it's not the smartest thing, 
And it straight up looks like some other chick died in here, got molested, and then they turned her body into another monster. So that's charming. So let's try this again, without the added companionship of Mr. Fondle Monster. So yeah, this is it. You fill the green, the, the dildo with green jism, and then you get the fuck out of here. That's, that's the whole game. Three to whole dollars worth. Are you riveted yet? Because it's... Yeah, this is as action-packed as it gets. Buggy, enemies, and dildo statues. Also, I should mention, there is a random glowing tree. Don't ask me where the random glowing tree comes from. The random glowing tree does not do anything. It's just a randomly glowing tree. And then over on that side is a room with a random glowing vent. It's a world of the finest enthusiasms. So now that this area is out of the way, it's time that we continued on to the next leg of our adventure. Into the area, this is one of the two areas that you can spawn, is in here. And somewhere in one of these caged off rooms is the other cock statue. Well, there's four of them, but this is the one that's probably the, the most annoying to get to. So let's see here. There it is. So we'll pray to this puppy. And... Okay, it looks like we've found the bug. The best bug. So sometimes when you try to pray to the statue and you press and hold... The, okay, come on. Let, yeah, sometimes it bugs out when you do this, and instead of praying to the statue, you start shimming up and down like you're riding someone's cock, so... Oh, there it goes. I guess it's just bugged out. Okay. But yeah, sometimes that happens, which I think is probably the most apropos way of praying to these statues. In fact, I'm surprised that's not the way that you pray anyway. Especially considering, like, how this game is designed. Like, that's the part that I find the most baffling. I don't even know- I hear the monster in here. It make a wet slopping sound whenever you go past him. But I'm not quite sure where the hell he went. Okay, that's fine. I'm completely fine with that. We will just skip right over that butthole. And go into this area. So, this is like... It's a weird game. This game has got really well-modeled environments. So I wonder if some of these are stock bought from somewhere. And they're really elaborate, like this is an aqueduct area. But all they do is throw a couple of, like, really shitty enemies in here. And then don't do anything with them. Like, there's a cot goblin. And I'll show you what those guys look like in a second, because there's like a statue for those. And those are the two enemies. There's like the weird creepy crawlies. And then there's the cot goblins. And that's it. Oh, here we go. This one was easy to find. Alright, here we go. But yeah, so this thing's really elaborate. Like, there's these really elaborate environments. There's just nothing to find within them. There's no swords or spells or cool weapons. But there is one weapon that you can get in this game. And it makes the least sense out of everything that you have seen here this evening. So let's see here. Somewhere back in here, next to the cock goblin statue. And I'm not just saying that because, you know, this is a sexualized game. This thing literally has its dick out and it mauls you and probably does stuff to your body after you're dead. But what you can find in this game is that thing right there. Why, yes, in this game of magic and sorcery, you can find random discarded landmines that you can then use to kill your enemies. Now, it should be noted that the landmines are far more likely to kill you after they've been activated, because the enemies very seldom behave themselves and actually run over the landmines. So, I just thought that was weird. Like, of all the hills to die on in game design, in a medieval dungeon type castle, why pick, why pick in a futuristic landmine? Like, everything else in here is some type of magical something. And they're just like, no man, I'll, what people want is landmines. They don't want fireballs. 
They don't want to have something like magic or swords or anything that belongs in this environment for, you know, coherence and consistency. No, what they really want, Larry, is they want futuristic military grade killing ancient monsters landmines. So the last area that we're going to be in here is this random sort of aqueduct area. It's supposed to be a little bit of a labyrinth, and this is the only area in this entire game that actually changes from day to day. It doesn't change every time you play the game, I can tell you that. But it seems like either every time they update this game, or every time they, uh, what you call it? Every time the day switches, something about this game changes. The layout of everything. And these fuckers are super duper fast. In case you were curious. Why are you following me so much, dude? Go away. Go away, you annoying thing. Holy crap. Well, I found the room with the thing in it. Unfortunately, now there's a second thing in it, which will be blocking my ability to use it. That's, uh, that's fancy. Yeah, so they gave you, like, landmines. They're absolutely shitty weapons. They're terrible. Even if you put them down, they take a bit to activate. But until they, you see where the monster's running at you, and they can catch up to you regardless. There's nothing you can do. And how would you possibly know, like, which way they're gonna path until they start chasing you? Because their AI is so very unreliable. I guess I'm just gonna have to lure him out. Is this the one? This is the one. All right. Hey, bud. Come on. Let's go. I got shit to show you. Can you come out of there? Come on, buddy. You coming out? Oh, well, I'm dead. Well, yeah, that's basically, that whole thing is bloody boobs. It's a whole not bonerific experience. There's just tits thrown in there for the hell of it. I would honestly say you're probably better off spending your $3 somewhere else. This game is basically an early access, although from the looks of the ga the store page, it's out into full release, so I'm not really sure what the deal is. Uh, but it's only $3, I guess, but I don't know that that excuses that this is just kind of a ramshackle alpha thing. And I don't know. There's just it's just kind of a random rigmarole mix and match. Yeah, this is not worth the three dollars. Even though I got on a sale for like less than three, it's still not even worth that. Wait till the Steam Summer Sale, where you can buy a bunch of stuff for ninety nine cents with that three dollars. You'll get much more bang for your buck. Stay away from bloody boobs. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Toodles, everybody, and have a good one.